Kirsten's saying, what about the story about baboons breaking into a guest room? Well, if you want to know about baboons breaking into guest rooms, there's one that many of you will have heard this before, but, you know, there's only so much you can do on a rainy day. That it, and it appears almost verbatim in the book A Year in the Wild, but I'll tell it to you now. And there was, an, there was an Arab sheik of some description. I don't know where he was from, but he was arriving in a private jet at Londolozi Game Reserve, obviously massively salubrious establishment, beautiful place, huge reputation. And this guy had booked out, I don't know if he'd booked out the whole camp. camp? He may well have booked out the whole place. Anyway, they had prepared a suite for him. And he brought an entourage including chefs, a hairdresser, any number of wives. I don't know how many it was exactly, but there were there were there were a f quite a few, and each had each wife had her own room. Security detail. I think a whole lot of their own food as well. Not to mention quite a lot of whiskey, which I don't think was necessarily uh, supposed to be public knowledge, but there it was. And he, this was way long ago, sort of very early 2000s or late, yeah, very early 2000s I think it was. And everything was perfectly organized and the room was sorted. And the operations manager at the time was a tremendously character-filled woman, woman who she was a brilliant chef, and but you know very emotional. So when stuff went wrong, you knew about it. And she went as the la as the plane landed. He came in a private jet. She went down to just do one final check of the room and check that everything was okay. And someone had left a sliding door open. The baboons had got in and they had totaled the place. Now I don't know if you've ever been into a room that a baboon troop has decided to uh, burgle, but it's not pretty. They had opened the minibar, bitten through all of the cans that had been in the minibar. That had then obviously cut their gums, so there was blood everywhere. They had smashed the crystal decanters in which the sheik's whiskey and sherry were. That had then resulted them in them cutting their hands because they had then walked all over the broken glass. So there was blood all over the place from that. One of them, and I, <laughs> she used to tell a great story, so I'm not entirely sure if this is true, but as she got into the room, the baboons were still there. She said one of them, <laughs> I don't know if I, I want to know if this is true or not, but I just love it too much, the image. A young baboon was apparently hanging on the ceiling fan, going around and around and around, sc <laughs> screaming loudly. And then there were others that were on the bed, taking the pictures off the walls. And when baboons burgle a place like this, oh, there were others in the shower drinking the the, what do you call them? I always want to call them condiments. What are they called? It's not called a condiment. No, not the complimentary. It's called something else. No, not the, yes, they were drinking the complimentary shampoo, but there's another word for it. Anyway, they were drinking that and they were in glass bottles, so those were all smashed, more blood. On the sink and everywhere, but I, the worst part of when a baboon burgles a place is that they have no decorum about where and when they void their bowels and so there was baboon poo everywhere on the bed smeared on the walls on the sink in the loo on the loo on the sofa it was a big suite everywhere now the planes landed and this guy is on his way to the lodge so she's got a radio and obviously she puts out a, an emergency call on the radio 
I don't think there was any fancy code about it. I just think she used a lot of four-letter words and said everybody on deck here right now. And she said to the guide who was bringing the guest chic down now, I don't care what you do, you get him onto the deck at the main camp and you entertain him because we've got a problem. So everybody rushed down to this room and they began to clean it up. And being Ronda Losey, they managed to do it in very little time at all. Uh, but there is no way of getting rid of the stink of baboon poo. It is, it's not as bad as lion poo, but it's bad. And it is a stink that seems to pervade, no matter how thoroughly you clean something. And so the room by this stage looks great. They've got the sheik up on the deck because one of the guys has now pretended that he's seen a leopard in the sand river just below and he's trying desperately to show the sheik this leopard. Sheik is totally disinterested, just wants to go to his room and eventually says I'm going take me to the room now and so the guy has no option but to sort of start walking down and Yvonne looks into the room and she says this looks great but it smells appalling what are we going to do about this and one of the trackers I think it was says well there's elephant dung outside why don't we just tell him it's that and she says but you can see that elephant made that dung about four weeks ago it's dry and so he said it's no problem and he quickly went around the back of the room brought out a hose pipe sprayed it with water and as the sheik came in the front door everybody disappeared out the back door and he apparently sniffed around a bit but didn't seem to take too much notice and his stay went off without a hitch after that I'm pretty sure that some of the story was exaggerated when I heard it, especially the bit about the young baboon swinging <laughs> around and around on the ceiling fan. <laughs>